Up until now, we've been measuring devices that actually generate their own signal, such as a transmitter or a signal generator. But what happens if we want to measure a device that doesn't generate its own signal, such as a filter or an antenna? Well, I have a filter here, a duplexer or diplexer, uh, which you commonly find at the uh, at base stations for separating the receive and transmit signal before it goes up the antenna. In fact, it's two filters. So how do we go about measuring that? Well, if you have the tracking generator option installed on the analyzer, that generates a signal out of this port here, which sweeps synchronously with the receiver sweeping on the analyzer. So if we connect the signal out from the tracking generator into the filter and from the filter back into the analyzer, we should be able to see a frequency response plot of this device. So I've connected the tracking generator output to one of the inputs on the filter and the output from the filter to the input of the spectrum analyzer. Now, don't forget, if you're measuring a three-port device such as this, remember to terminate the any unused ports with a 50-ohm load. So to turn the tracking generator on, we press the mode button and press tracking generator. And we'll turn the tracking generator on. And here you can see a response over the entire frequency range of the instrument, that's 7 gigahertz, uh, of this filter, which I happen to know is around the uh, 430 megahertz band. So let's set a center frequency of, say, 430 megahertz. And then I'll press the span button. And using the arrow keys, I'll just zoom in. And we can look at some of the detail here of the filter. We can see that it's a notch filter. And there's supposed to be a pass band here. One of the cavities of the filter looks like it's not lined up properly. And if I press the marker button and turn the knob, we can move marker one here down to the notch of the filter and see approximately what frequency that notch is. Now you'll see there's quite a bit of noise at the bottom of the notch there. So let's see what steps we can take to improve the sensitivity and hence the dynamic range of the measurement. Well, if I press the Mesh key, you'll see that the amplitude of the tracking generator is set to minus 20 dBm. So let's select that and increase it to its maximum value, which is 0 dBm. And now you can see we've gained about 20 dB of dynamic range. There's still a bit of noise at the bottom of the notch there, though. So let me just zoom in. I'll press the Span button. There you can see it there. Now, like with spectrum analyzer measurements, we can also reduce the attenuation. You'll see here the attenuation is set to 20 dB. So if I press the amplitude button again and set the attenuation to 0 dB, you'll now see we've got a much improved noise floor and hence dynamic range. And we can clearly see the shape of the bottom of the notch filter. Now, those of you that have done network analyzer measurements before will know that we're never making an absolute measurement of a device. We're always making a relative measurement, comparing the frequency response of this filter with a known standard. In this case, I'm going to use a Type N through bullet adapter. And this is a good opportunity to point out that uh, for making network analyzer measurements, the quality of your measurement is going to depend very much on the quality of the adapters that you use. So rather than getting a cheap one from the local electronics store, I spend a bit more money and go and get a good quality one that you keep with the instrument for this kind of measurement. So I'll disconnect the filter and I'll connect the through adapter. And if we press the mesh key, and then normalize, store ref one to four, that saves the trace into the memory, and then press normalize on. The instrument has now normalized this trace. The trace is now at exactly zero dB, right the way across the top of the screen, and is removing any losses or errors from the cables and adapters and the rest of the measurement setup. I can now disconnect my through and reconnect my filter and now you can see the normalized insertion loss trace of the filter with a good clear indication of the shape of the notch. If I press the marker button, we can move marker one down to the bottom of the notch filter there. I can turn on a second marker and perhaps measure the insertion loss of the passband. And of course, most importantly, we have a very fast sweep time, 44 milliseconds. Quite incredible for a handheld analyzer. So if the filter needs tuning, we can make adjustments to the filter 
by adjusting the various cavities and tuning it up. If you'd like further information on these products, including demonstration guides, operating manuals or application notes, please visit the website shown below.